What we're doing here to maximize the roof space, we're building a uh, canopy structure with several pillars and underneath it people can sit and drink lemonade and it'll basically be about 24 panels um, of solar PV as well as some of these solar hot water heater panels raised above and the water tank will also be on the roof to heat your water so if you create a little canopy structure people can actually use the ground space on the terrace um, and it'll have a 4.2 kilowatt system to generate electricity which covers about 40 percent of the houses um, electricity needs during the day and then we have the solar water heaters also preserved and those panels are here as well as the hot water heater um, to produce both solar electricity and solar hot water heating so there will there are water meters um, and gas meters and then the electricity meters which will show you exactly how much solar electricity you're consuming how much uh, diesel your electricity you're consuming and then how much grid as well as ideally tell you the co2 emissions created from each one as well as tell you the cost in rupees per unit. So this maximum amount of information can then allow you to make a real difference. And ideally, there'll be automatic settings, like I was telling you before, with smart metering technology. It'll allow the house to automatically turn on and off loads if, um, if, for example, it wants to switch to solar and the diesel is about to come on, it can turn off the washing machine, it can turn off uh, the non-essential loads so that you're reducing your consumption. If the diesel generator comes on, um, that's costing about 16 rupees per unit. That's the price set by this community. That's more than four times the cost of grid electricity. Solar can definitely compete at diesel generation cost. Can you tell us a bit about this concept of the house being able to feed energy back into the grid? Yeah, so um, solar energy, when it's not being consumed usually on a rooftop, you can feed back into the grid um, for it to be consumed by others. In India, the grid is pretty inefficient with on average 30 to 40 percent losses. So what we've designed for this community is a microgrid. All 330 homes are on a separate grid with just a single point connection to the main grid. So what happens here with one of the solar homes, of which there are 18 homes will have the solar systems. Whenever that home is not consuming the solar electricity, it'll feed into the community grid first to be purchased by the next door neighbor if he or she wants it, or to be purchased by the community itself for the community water pumps, for the community buildings. Um, there's a communication center as well um, for the gym. Um, so it'll be used first by the house, second by the community, and then whatever's then not used would then be put into the main grid where it can be sent off.